Fire Emblem Three Houses is finally here, and there's so much to dive headfirst into. But before you start planning your path to love and war on and off the battlefield, here are five helpful tips to remember when getting started at Garrig Mach Monastery. Fire Emblem Three Houses has so many things for you to do before you even step foot in the field. Among them are different ways to check in on your students and raise their motivation levels, which then impacts how many times you can improve their strengths and weaknesses during lessons. Usually that will cost you activity points if you decide to share a meal or attend a choir practice together and you only have a limited amount. But there is still plenty to do that doesn't dip into those precious activity points to help raise those motivation levels. Try to remember to make your way over to the greenhouse and the lake each time you explore the monastery for some gardening and fishing. Those are easy ways to get free experience points on a Sunday exploring the monastery. Flowers that are harvested from the greenhouse each week can be given to students as gifts to help raise their motivation levels. This is great because you won't spend any of those precious activity points getting them ready for the next week's lessons. Any fish you catch can also be used as ingredients for shared meals between students and to make meals from scratch too. You can cook and dine with fellow faculty members too. As your characters level up to get stronger in battle or hit the books extra hard in the classroom, they'll unlock certain abilities and combat arts. Abilities act as passive effects that will improve attacks, boost defense and resistance, or improve things like your overall HP. Combat arts are special attacks that can deal a little more damage, but come at a cost. They'll impact the durability of whatever weapon your character is using. Use them too much and your weapon will break. It'll still work, but it won't be anywhere near as good as it used to be until you get it fixed at least. Before each battle, make sure you remember to survey the map and see what you're up against, but more importantly, hop into your abilities and combat arts menus to assign the right things to be even more effective against whatever enemies you're up against. When it's time to head back into the classroom, pay attention to your students' strengths and weaknesses. Thankfully, they're all laid out in a really convenient menu, showcasing the things they're good at and the things that might be really tough for them to learn. Sometimes the things they have low ratings for will also have three little stars next to them, which indicate a potential budding talent should you choose to shift their focus to something different. Show that particular focus a little love and eventually it will introduce some new abilities for them to utilize. You can assign students custom focuses that will take their newfound interests into account. If not, sometimes the students will approach you before a lecture and ask to change focuses too. So you can decide to lean into the students' strengths or let them choose new areas of interest. The choice is yours. Listening to your students isn't only reserved for leveling up certain focuses for battle, it's good to catch up with them and get to know them too. Walking up and talking to them one-on-one -on -one is a great way to go about doing that. But if there are certain students you really want to get to know, try inviting them out to tea. You'll want to pay attention to the conversations you've been having with your students and select the right topics to talk about. Get enough of them right and they'll have a great time. That means your bonds will strengthen and your support levels will gradually increase meaning better bonuses when they're positioned near each other in combat, like added defense. The bonds formed between students are also crucial to pay attention to as you progress through the game. Heading into the support menu will show you all of the members in your house and the corresponding support levels with fellow housemates. It's important not to forget to watch these short, well-written interactions between characters to get a better sense for their own personalities and improve their support levels. This will also grant them bonuses during combat if they're near each other. So take some time to get to know your students better even when you're not around to see it. As you fill out your roster, some students might have to occasionally warm the bench. The good news is, if you want to continue leveling them up, you can do that by setting them up as adjutants to characters active in battle. What this does is connect two characters together, so when the active character levels up by earning experience points, that character on the sidelines gets some XP too. For example, if a little sword icon pops up next to someone, they might get an additional attack. If there's a little green sparkly icon, that will occasionally heal. The limit of how many people can be paired up raises with your character's professor level, so remember to check back each time you rank up. There's so much to do in Fire Emblem Three Houses that it can be tough to remember it all. Just remember to take things slowly and if you need to, take some notes. We've got a comprehensive list of even more tips on the site and our review, so be sure to check those out too. Best of luck out there, and remember, with each battle, a chance to grow. One cool thing you can do during load screens is tilt your switch or controller to see your little byleth sprite run left and right. 
It really doesn't do anything besides help the time go by a little quicker, but it is pretty adorable. 